On the list of essentials when packing for a trip is always the toothbrush, which I somehow managed to forget most of the time. But what if you couldn't just buy one and you had to make it yourself, including the toothpaste? Well, that's what I'm gonna explore in this video as I attempt to recreate my own toothbrush and toothpaste from scratch. Along the way, I'll dig into how both used to be made, involving animal hair, and recreating two types of toothpaste that were used in the past. I'll also be recreating a more modern toothpaste and dissecting the purpose of each item as I source them across three different states. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. First, for some help, I visited dentist Dr. Shamblot for a quick crash course on dental hygiene and its history. Why do we need to clean our teeth? From day to day eating and consuming beverages and things, you develop some plaque and food particles that if they stay on your teeth, they'll fuel the bacteria that cause decay. These bacteria will excrete an acid that will over time literally eat little holes in your teeth. That's what we call cavities or decay. With toothbrushes and toothpaste and floss, we're able to get those organisms and food and sugar and everything off the teeth. The first item I want to make is a toothbrush. The toothbrush has evolved a lot over time, just the way toothpaste has. It started off with, with the twigs and it evolved into like pig hair and other things that I wouldn't even dream of putting in my mouth by today's standards. Pig hair was used because of its stiff bristles, which was once believed to be ideal for brushing your teeth. As dentists, we told everybody to get in there and really scrub. Now we know what that does. It wears away the enamel, it causes the gums to shrink away and recede. It's one of those cases where less is not always more. The thing I like best now are the mechanical toothbrushes because they do a far better job than they would with just a manual toothbrush. Speaking of electric toothbrushes, it's time for a word from our sponsor. Are you tired of having to pluck hair from a pig every time you need to brush your teeth? Do you wish you could easily and cleanly brush your teeth without having to grind your own animal hooves? Introducing today's sponsor, the Vanity Planet Elite Sonic Toothbrush. It includes three brush heads and a UV sanitizer that kills germs and bacteria. It also comes with three brushing modes and a smart auto timer. But what if you want it in colors like gold, silver, or coal? I bet you think you'd have to mine for them yourself. But nope, it comes in each of these colors for free. No mining equipment needed. No need to explore old caves and fight off angry bats. It also includes a long lasting battery that can last up to two weeks. This toothbrush is originally $250, but you can get it for 75% off at $63 by using this promo code HTM75. But we can't all live in that dream world of being able to buy pre-made items. So it's off to a pig farm for some hair. All right, we're at Littlefoot Farm with Karen here and we're gonna uh, get some pig hair to make a toothbrush. Have you ever used the pig hair before for anything? Well, actually, um, for DNA testing. And you said they don't really mind just plucking it right off or anything? You know, for the most part, they don't. They're pretty tough, they're uh, tough skin. We have some pliers in, so I'm just gonna grab the hairs and pluck yep, it out of the exactly. neck? Exactly, so just use the flat nose pliers and uh, pull and yank. All right. This is Bunyan, and generally the boards are the, sh you know, the shagier of the, you know, of the group. I'm surprised he doesn't mind that much. You couldn't do this with just any boar. All right, you couldn't actually be out here with just any boar, really. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but these guys, these heritage breeds are just much more docile and much more manageable. All right, piggy. Let's do your hair done. We'll do your nails next. So I was able to pluck the hair from the pigs just with a pair of pliers and they didn't even seem to mind at all. We're more interested in rubbing up against me, the tripod, our crew, everybody. Just more interested in getting his, his head scratched than the fact that all of his hair was getting plucked out. <laughs> now, with the bristles of my brush, I just need a stick to attach it to. And then adhere it there with some boiled pig's hide glue. While I let the glue set on my toothbrush, next, I'll need some toothpaste. For that, Dr. Shamblot had a few more suggestions for me. Toothpaste is, is a vehicle to help, you know, scrub and get the plaque and bacteria and, and food particles off your teeth. The basic components of a toothpaste are, there's abrasives, which act kind of like a sandpaper almost to help get things off the teeth, help polish the teeth to a certain degree. Flavor chemicals, things to make it have a tolerable taste. 
because if we didn't add flavors on top of it, toothpaste would taste pretty nasty. Toothpaste can be traced back to roughly 5000 BC. The initial toothpastes were made from ox hoof ashes and crushed bones. Over time, they added other items to, to make them a little more abrasive. They added charcoal, they added chalk, and other things to make them a little bit more abrasive and to clean a little better. I was curious about these historical toothpastes that have been used. So I want to try one using ingredients I've already collected from other projects. Some gypsum, seashells, pumice, and animal hooves. A few different methods that were used by Egyptians and Persians. I'm gonna kind of make my own combination of them. Roast the seashells and hooves, grind it up into a powder, and make my own little toothpaste. Crush. Smells nasty. Burnt hair. Ugh. And just like the ancient Egyptians, you take out your cuisine art, fill her up. Mmm, smells like burnt hair. Just how you want your breath to smell. I also found a 14th century British recipe that used some ingredients I've previously produced back when I made a sandwich from scratch. Salt, flour, and honey. Now the fun part getting the toothpaste in the tube. Not, not a normal toothpaste flavor. I doubt many dentists recommend rubbing pure sugar on your teeth. I'll eventually be getting some volunteers to help test these interesting toothpastes out. But first, I wanna try and replicate a more modern style of toothpaste as well. First up, in abrasive and filler, there's most often the number one ingredient in most modern toothpaste, hydrated silica, which is basically sand. I have some sand here I got from the Mississippi River, and I'm gonna go through a process here to purify it into just pure silicon dioxide. And in the process, hopefully hydrate it into hydrated silica. It's basically gonna act like sandpaper and clean your teeth. To chemically purify the sand, it's first mixed with a strong base of lye and baked at 600 degrees Fahrenheit or 320 degrees Celsius. More fumes. Then dissolve it into water and filter out the impurities. Then a strong acid like sulfuric ah. is slowly reacted to it to form sacilic acid. Yeah, get a little closer. Nice jelly. After that, it's rinsed out with water. I feel like I'm gonna perform a musical act. and the final solution is boiled down to a dry sand. At this point, the particle size are usually ground to an ideal amount for the type of toothpaste, with a more coarser grain for a more whitening toothpaste. But I'm just gonna skip that step and rehydrate it. Another common abrasive ingredient for cleaning is chalk, which I can make by grinding up some calcite rock. A third abrasive and cleaning option is one I accidentally came across while I was collecting salt at the Redman Salt Mine in Utah, bentonite clay. So in addition to the great salt deposits we have here in Utah, there's also a lot of other minerals. So this behind us is a deposit of volcanic ash known as bentonite. The way that this particular deposit was discovered was when the early settlers came into the area, the natives um, were using this for all things topical, using it topically for burns and bee stings, spider bites. And if you look at it under a microscope as a fine powder, it has a very large surface area to surface tension ratio. So one gram of clay has the surface area of 800 square meters. And something that's that small that has a surface area that large yeah. draws stuff into it. Growing up, whether it was because my dad was cheap or because he was a genius, we would often brush our teeth with a combination of clay powder and salt powder. Clay's the polisher 
and the cleanser because it breaks down the biofilms and the salt is a great antibacterial if you use it in high amounts to help promote good oral health but it doesn't taste very good to make this with a toothpaste what you would do is you would crush it to a powder mm -hmm. and then if you hydrate it with water it becomes a paste so, all right if i collect some myself yeah please yep help yourself all right mix of redmond minerals got some bun tonight now to go make some toothpaste one last cleaning ingredient that is oftentimes found in toothpaste is baking soda, which can both act as a cleaning agent, but also help neutralize any damaging acids in your mouth. And right here I have some of the natron I collected in Wyoming. Natron itself was actually used for toothpaste by the Egyptians, but uh, most of this is gonna be soda ash. So I'm gonna dissolve it into water, react it with this tank of carbon dioxide, bubble the uh, carbon dioxide through it, and then out should precipitate baking soda. And there's also a lot of other impurities which hopefully should stay dissolved. It should have very pure baking soda left. Then all these minerals aren't necessarily gonna have the best taste. So I'll try and add a little flavor from some peppermint plants. So I got a really jerry-rigged steam distillation set up. Missing a few needed parts and some of this stuff is missing and some of it is broken. So kind of jerry-rigged a setup that will hopefully work. So if I want my toothpaste not to have that nice taste of burnt hair, the other stuff I made would, I'm gonna add a little bit of peppermint oil extract. So previously I did a regular mint extract from my candy canes and I did that by extracting using alcohol, which is an effective method, but it's slow and it gets kind of diluted. So what I'm gonna do with a process called steam distillation this time. I'm gonna load up this vessel here with a bunch of mint leaves and then steam is gonna be generated from this bottom flask, go through it, extract the oils, and then get condensated and come out the other end, in theory. Didn't work at all, not even a single drop. Obviously about way too big of a biomass flask. Boiled up, condensated inside of it, drip down back into the boiling flask. So instead of separating it and being distilled, I have a combination of water and peppermint oil. They have different boiling points, so I'm still gonna try and see if I can salvage this by distilling this and separating out the water, which should boil at a lower temperature and leave behind the peppermint oil. So give that a shot. Probably not the ideal way to do this, but it might work. So I have the hydrated silica, purified from Mississippi sand and hydrated. I have some baking soda, just a very small amount I was able to make from the natron I got in Wyoming. I have from the bentonite clay we got in Utah, as well as some calcite we got from Cody in Utah. And then to give it a little bit of flavor, I have the peppermint oil, which should both give it a bit of a minty flavor and also act as somewhat of a preservative. So I'm just gonna combine it all together, put it in the tube, and we'll try out all the different toothpaste recipes I've made. Got my toothpaste all set now, and uh, just gotta have some people try it out. But before I test them, Dr. Shamblot felt there's one more very important, but somewhat dangerous ingredient worth mentioning that I was unable to procure, fluoride. Hands down the most important ingredient. Fluoride in high concentrations and in large quantities can be dangerous. You really, really need fluoride in your toothpaste. Mm -hmm. uh, periodically, I have patients come in that tell me that they don't use fluoride in their toothpaste, and almost every one of them has a ton of cavities. Now with everything put together, I'll have some volunteers try it out. Take care everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. Absolutely not. I will never put this in my mouth. I'm scared. <laughs> You know what, I don't hate the toothbrush that much. I would use this for the novelty of it. It's fun. I'm not sure how my dentist would feel about this. I'd have to ask them. Oh, God. Oh, look at that. It's like hair dye. Oh, it looks like squid ink. Toothpaste. Oh, geez. Is this supposed to like be liquid? This looks like the eyeliner that you made. It looks like bird It's literal diarrhea. If you've ever wanted to see a 21 year old cry, you're gonna see it today. It hurts my gums. It's very pokey. It's like rock. I'm not sure how to get in the back. Oh, oh. Oh, it's on my tongue! <laughs> <laughs> I want my teeth to be clean! Uh, I can't even like describe the flavor. <laughs> my tongue. 
tongue feels weird. Now that like I'm used to it, I'm not alarmed to the flavor. I think it was the initial shock of it. Like I could keep going. Like now that I know it's horse hooves, I can say it was definitely horse hooves. I feel like I just licked my dog. How do you describe something so awful? I love when you guys prank me and just give me dirt to put in my mouth. It just tastes like burnt. The sound of like honey kind of like makes it much better than horse hooves. What the hell? This stuff is not coming out. Oh, it's coming out on its own. Yeah, look at it go. Oh, this is like the most toothpaste consistency out of all three of them, I feel. It looks like bird poop. But it also looks the closest to vomit, so I'm not sure how into it I really am. <gasps> oh. oh, I don't like that. Oh, I don't like that. No fear. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, no. Nah. Oh, that is the worst one. I'm gonna cry. It was salty. <laughs> this one tasted like straight up salt and I did not like that. Also, it like had this weird like texture in my mouth where like it clumped up and like stuck to things. And uh, it just, mm, nope, not feeling it. I can't even describe it. <laughs> it's very salty. It is alarmingly salty and almost made me vomit. <coughs> my throat hurts. Well, this one looks a lot more pleasant. <laughs> it actually has like a paste. Consistency. Okay, let's try this. Oh. I'm gonna throw up. Oh my god. Oh, it doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't taste good either. It's like the taste of ocean water without the salt, if that makes sense. It's like mint gum after you've chewed it for six hours and it's still in your mouth for some reason. Oh, the aftertaste isn't that bad. It's like an herb. It tastes like a plant. Like when you eat like grass when you're like five. And it has like that chlorophyll taste. Yeah, I don't taste any mint in this. Just a lot of sand. I swallowed some. Not terrible. I don't know if I'd call it toothpaste, but. Andy did a great job. Last one won me over. But it actually wasn't terrible. Would your doctor recommend any of these toothpastes? No. Dr. Shamblot would probably agree. So if I was gonna attempt to make my own toothpaste from scratch, what would you recommend? Well, first I'd recommend that you not do that. After those rave reviews, you might be wondering why I didn't try it myself, but. Why would I try that disgusting toothbrush when I just got sent this really nice electric toothbrush from our sponsor? So, uh, I'm just gonna use that. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.